What is up guys, it is your boy Serge. So today we're gonna talk about the new Acer Nitro 5. This is the GTX 1650 version with the eight gigabytes of RAM. It's kind of a weird configuration, kind of much lower spec than what I usually get, but I wanted to see if this budget gaming laptop would be worth it. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons, what makes this particular laptop good. Stick around and we'll find out pop this baby open. If you guys are interested in getting this laptop, be sure to check out the refurbished version of this machine. It'll cost you about 70% of the normal laptop, so you'll be getting about $300 to $400 off depending on where you buy it. I got this particular one from the Acer recertified eBay store. Alright, so at first glance, it's nothing fancy and the laptop is kind of hard to open, which is a pain in the ass. You got a nice cold metal feel. Pretty nice, simple look. I like it. Got the nice Acer branding. Lots of red in this laptop. We got red keys. Red accents are on the trackpad. This specific model is a 17 inch variant. One thing that I noticed is that it does have small bezels, which I do like for the screen because it shows to me that they're utilizing all the screen real estate. However, I was disappointed to see that there was no G-Sync based screens you can get with this Acer model. This really cool red looking hinge says Nitro on it right below the Acer logo. I think it's a pretty sweet look. The majority of the laptop is made from plastic. And there's this cool triangular pattern. You got a headphone jack, USB 3.0, LED indicators for battery and hard drive, charging cord, and a ventilation system. Come around the back, we'll see two more vents sandwiched in the middle. Come around the side, we see a Kensington lock, an Ethernet port, HDMI, USB-C, and two more USB 3.0 ports. So what is it like to actually game on this computer? Well, you know, it does only have 8 gigabytes of RAM and the norm now is 16 gigabytes. So you're, you are gonna feel some stuttering in games, which is a real shame. I really wish I could have gotten a 16 gigabyte model of this computer. Now, the beauty of it is you can open this device up and add an extra 8 gig module, which is actually really easy to do. I'll show you guys how to do that in this video if you are looking to upgrade. Overall, the games run well but you do have to tone down things like antistropic and anti-aliasing. If you do that, you should be able to game fairly good with at least 40 to 60 FPS with everything else maxed out. Now that is pretty impressive considering that this is only a four gigabyte card. This is the GTX 1650 and it's running the i5 uh, 9 series processor. And you know, I actually wanted to get this specific configuration because I wanted to see if this machine could pull it, you know? Can a machine game well with four gigabytes of VRAM and eight gigabytes of RAM? Like, I actually thought this would be a much bigger bottleneck than it was, but I was able to play all my games and enjoy it without almost any issues. The elephant in the room here is actually this device's cooling. Sometimes while you're gaming, you may notice some stuttering or crazy FPS drops. So instead of having 65 FPS, it might actually go down to like 20 FPS. And it's kind of unclear as to why specifically, but I'm thinking it's probably related to thermal throttling or power limit throttling. When you start gaming, your machine starts to slow down pretty much almost immediately. So unfortunately, you're not getting the true performance of the hardware. So this hardware could actually perform even better. Here I'm playing Rust and I have the graphics literally maxed out except for AA and Antistropic and you know it's running at like 35 to 40 FPS so you may need to drop it down to about medium to high. However if you're a much more serious gamer and you need better performance I would recommend something with 16 gigabytes or something with a slightly higher GTX 1650Ti something along those lines because you will get about 30% better performance. Let's take a look at what it's like to upgrade this machine. 
So it's quite easy. There's nothing really complex. Just remove all the screws. The back comes off your hardware. At the top, we've got a battery. It is user replaceable. Pretty much everything here is accessible and replaceable. We got a slot here for a SATA drive. Don't recommend using these as you do get two slots for NVMe drives. And these drives are way faster, so I'd avoid using the SATA ones. I'll show you how to upgrade those as well. Near the bottom we have the cooling system. Now both of these fans do share two heat pipes and this is considered kind of a bad design because once the GPU gets too hot it'll start overheating the CPU which causes the thermal throttling. Here we have our two slots for RAM. We've got a one 8 take stick. I'll show you how to upgrade that as well. Pretty simple stuff. We'll start with the NVMe SSD drives. One thing that I found really interesting is that they put on these little uh, metallic heat sinks with a little heat pad and this is really just kind of designed to uh, keep your SSD cool and to absorb some of its heat. I haven't really seen too many of these around so that's kind of neat that Acer is willing to include that. Once you remove the screw you can remove both the uh, bracket and or the SSD and just kind of insert it diagonally, put the screw back on and you're good to go. The RAM is even an easier thing. All you gotta do is remove these little metallic arms from the side and the RAM pops up diagonally and you can just basically remove it and reinsert it. Now the tricky thing about the RAM is you wanna make sure that the notches are properly aligned or you're not gonna be able to insert it correctly. You might even risk damaging the slot. So make sure that the notch in the center is aligned before you insert your RAM. And if you do have the funds, definitely get yourself another eight gigabyte stick. The keyboard is definitely a strong suit on this laptop. It's got nice backlit keys. These are chiclet keys. They work really well. They have good pressure and fairly good travel. I like how they feel on the keyboard. They're fairly sturdy and they're great for typing and even for gaming. I found that there are no issues while using this. The Wasad keys are highlighted for you, which is kind of funny. I'm not sure why they're doing that. I guess. They're trying to appeal to gamers, let you know that, hey, that's where you put your hand if you're going to play an FPS game. <laughs> kind of funny because FPS games are not the only types of games, but not all games use Wasad, so kind of interesting that they included that. And the trackpad are probably the most uh, generic items on this device. It resembles something from 2012. Not the smallest, but decent size. You know, the scrolling is smooth and it does click, but it doesn't click very well at the top, unfortunately. But, um, I don't know, it still feels kind of not as smooth as it could be. And I would just prefer the trackpad a little bit larger. For those times when I don't use a mouse when I'm surfing the net, it's nicer to have a larger trackpad. It does feel a little dated, but it works. First impressions of the laptop are a little bit odd. The hinge is really stiff, and you almost have to use two hands just to open it up. However, the nice thing is it does open up almost to 180 degrees, so you do get a lot of flexion with the hinge. However, I'm not sure how long this will last, as it is somewhat thin, and it seems like it's just not as sturdy as other laptops, but unfortunately that is the trade-off when you buy affordable laptops. They are very plasticky. When doing my analysis to see what's going on with the computer, I actually noticed while playing Counter-Strike, I dropped from 80 frames to like 20 to 25 FPS. I have no idea how this could be happening, even while thermal throttling and power limit throttling. This should not be dropping that badly. So the performance is somewhat unexplainable why it's so bad. Now, a lot of brands figured out that even if, they, if the laptop does get too hot, the performance ramps down and you can still game, but maybe you don't get as much FPS. Unfortunately, with this machine, when the performance ramps down, you actually do notice it and it is kind of a pain in the ass. So that's why I recommend that if you're a serious gamer to maybe not get this machine, but to consider something else. But if you know what to expect and you need this specific laptop because the price is right, it may be good for you. It depends. It really depends on who you are and what you want out of a machine. Personally, I would say that performance like that is unacceptable. One thing that I did find really nice is the heat. The laptop can actually be used on your lap and isn't as excruciatingly hot. That's because it uses a lot of plastic that does not absorb all the heat. So that is one good thing about this machine. I was disappointed that 
the thermal throttling was occurring. Basically, that means that the device is too hot and ramps down the performance. But the other thing that shocked me was the power limit throttling. Essentially, the power brick is too small and can't power the computer. So I think they figured that it was going to get too hot anyway, so they would underpower the device to maybe help it keep cool. But this is pretty lame because you're not kind of getting what you paid for. The laptop, when running on max GPU and CPU, does get a little loud, but not as loud as like Alienware machines or MSI machines. The reality is all the laptops get hot and loud, so that is just something you will need to expect. Here I'm running Furmark, and I'm also using CPU-Z to benchmark the CPU and the GPU simultaneously to see what will, what will happen, what will occur. Is my computer gonna freeze up? Is it gonna have debilitating performance drops? And for whatever reason, while doing these benchmarks, there really wasn't any lag or performance drops, which makes me confused. I don't understand why Counter-Strike was lagging, but my other games were not lagging. This could mean that it is an optimization issue with Counter-Strike and this specific hardware. All right, so what do I really think about this machine? Well, it is pretty messed up that the performance drops are so debilitating and sometimes occur without really an explanation. And what do I mean by this? Well, even though device thermal throttles, which means it gets too hot, so it ramps the performance down so we can stay cool, even though it's dropping its performance, the types of FPS drops we're seeing are too high. There's just too much. It shouldn't be dropping that much. So if you look at Counter-Strike and how I'm all of a sudden running at 20 FPS, it literally makes no sense how it can be that bad. Um, and it is a little disappointing that there's power limit throttling. They were just too cheap to put in a power brick that could power the device. Uh, the other thing I noticed when you go to their website, they have all these like fake imagery about what the laptop looks like when it's taken apart. And it's like, a laptop doesn't look like that when you look inside it. And so they're, they're just using really weird marketing. Um, and you know, you're not getting the performance you paid for, which is a little disappointing, but you know, it's a cheap laptop, so you can't expect everything to be perfect. At least the, the upgrading on it is pretty good. You gain access to the RAM, you got access to the NVMe drives. There's two of them and you also get a spot for a SATA drive. Like, so the upgradability on this laptop, perfect. It's really, really good. I would only recommend getting it if you can get it for the right price. And if you're not a super serious gamer. Because if you're a casual and you just want to play some games, it's probably going to be fine. It's going to be fine for the majority of people to try to get it. It's only those extremely serious gamers that need their computer to always be running really well. Like if you're playing competitive games, if you're playing competitive games, don't get this machine. Anyway, that's my review. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe if um, you want to see more videos. If you've got questions, I'm here to answer all of them. Leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Cheers.